it's really nice here. Looks some people are setting up for a little Havana. Let me move colors. <laughs> How far does the Little Havana extend? It starts, where does it start? Like on 27. Yeah. All the way up to like 95? So it's kind of like the first time of... Are you from around here? No, actually, but I am here to... Oh, there they are. Oh, you're um, in the group. Yeah, I'm meeting a couple of people because we're doing something in this area as well. I kind of find it like a modern Ellis Island. You know? Have you read any history on this area? Yeah, I have, and we were just discussing the fact that there... Not only through history, but people are still arriving. Yeah. From the yeah, no, but from here. I live in Hollywood. Hey, oh, hey. Yes. 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 You are today. Hello. Oh, hello. 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 No, no, this was. I think you just started asking me questions. Oh, okay. She's wonderful. She's the best. All of Miami knows who Stephanie is. Who are you? You're a model or something? No, no, no. no. So? No. What's he talking about? Are you like some kind of celebrity we don't know? About? No, he's just teasing. He's just having fun. Yeah, it's good fun. With great friends. Yeah. So, where are you guys from? Tao Dolce. No, I live in Tao Dolce. Nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hello, Delaria. And what are you guys doing? Pa que vea, cabrón. Pa que vea. Pa que vea, cabrón. Pa que vea, cabrón. Just curious. When I saw you from far away, I thought you were somebody I knew. But it's like crazy. an actress or something, because I used to be. Really? Of course. Yes. No. No, somebody else. I know personally. But yes, you could look like it. You probably are you an I, actress? I was, yes. Where do you I'm a visual artist yeah. and also a performing artist. Where do you perform now? Here, you, you know the here the the theater? Yeah. Uh, Marty, a group of Cuban writers and directors that um, wanted to continue the tradition of uh, what is called uh, in Spanish Teatro Bufo, that is uh, the, the theater, the type of place that you do more, it, it's more like an experimental theater, it's more based on improvisations than anything else. 
So you you gather a group of actors and you know you you develop the theme and from there you take it and it's interactive with the audience. It's very very interesting. It's nothing new, you know. It's come from yeah. ooh, centuries ago. That's the way the actors used to travel from one town to the next. So whatever was happening in politics or whatever, you know, they were representing it in yeah. front of people. And uh, as a visual artist, what I do is more digital art that later we print on... Uh, well, this is my artwork. <laughs> oh. You want to see yes. the ones? Beautiful art. How do you like it? Are you oh. impressed so far? You know, I think uh, my problem was I didn't realize the geography. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I have driven through this uh, area several times, but didn't didn't see it as Little Havana, because I was just driving through, right? I wasn't in the mindset, mindset of yeah. someone who's coming through, talking to people, kind of really getting the vibe of the place. When you drive up through a place, yeah. it's totally different. This area has, uh, is peculiar because it uh, has the authentic Cuban flavor. So the Cubans you see here are exactly as the Cubans you will see over there that steal, that, that didn't flew out of the country when Fidel Castro came in. I'm talking about people, you know, older than 60 years old. Yeah. And they have kept, oh. <laughs> no, you're not. They have kept the right? same, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have kept their, their, their way of living. So it's a place, in, you know, you come here, you don't need to speak English. That for some people, oh, especially, know. you know, older people, it's convenient. This is Soyla. Oh my God! Mis amiguitas. Hola! Fusion Gitana on Little Havana. Oh, yeah, because you're teaching here in front, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, uh, my name's David. Jeannie. Nice to meet you. Zizi, nice, nice to meet you. And Nora. Hi, nice to meet you. So, do you know the, yes. the surroundings here very well? Yes. yes. So, we dance here every Saturday. Oh, oh, the, 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 studio. the event that happens here. Right which I've heard of it, never been, but now I'm curious and I want to come back. Oh, you should? Yeah, you should. And we have danced here in this area. This is where they have the performances. The, What's, what's what can be more natural than dancing in the street, like or in the environment? Or? And you should see them dance in the rain. It's happened in the middle of rain, and gypsies keep dancing. It's a matter of it rains. How do you guys know each other? She, she used to be my student. She was a gypsy. Oh, oh okay. I actually know her from belly motions. We were we were belly dancers together. Yes. We are belly dancers and then gypsies. And gypsies. And look at that beautiful skirt Thank with you. all the colors. Thank I love you. it. <laughs> and here we go, Fusion Gitana. Fusion Gitana. Oh, I have to get that one in camera. Oh. <laughs> but I gotta take a photo. I want one of those. I love it. Oh, oh yes. Ah. It's the best of both worlds. I know. The flamenco with the belly dancing and it's amazing. Why are you filming? We're just getting started. The, the second round, this is the elimination uh, process. We are going to eliminate. Oh, they're going to eliminate. Just, just one game, 150. Okay. One, one game, 150. Wait, 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 wait. So who comes out? We do. We do. We do. Well, I was talking to the uh, camera lady. Why was the camera interview? <laughs> While I was being interviewed, I got screwed. <laughs> 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 
Kid. Oh. <laughs> and did you come to Miami or did you go somewhere else because I mean it was spread all over the country? No, only, no, only everybody wow. came to Miami at first. Yeah, but then they were... And then we were sent to foster homes. We had three orphanages here. And then we were sent, the orphanages came, were so full that we were sent to foster homes everywhere. And I was sent to Chicago. Well, how long were you in Chicago? About two years until my mother came. My mother, my, my father was never able to leave Cuba because he was a political prisoner. And then, um, and then she reunited with me in Chicago and basically like, I grew up in Chicago. And then you came down here? No, I graduated from high school oh. and I got a scholarship to USC in LA, there is a Southern Cal. And then I moved to LA and I lived in LA for 11 years, graduated, got my master's, etc. Then I came here in 1790. What did you study? I do two things. I direct the Children's Nonprofit Foundation. Oh, interesting. And I, which provides services to underprivileged kids in Little Havana in education, fitness, nutrition, and basketball. And I have a marketing, social media, and finance company. In, in what, what side of like social media? We do everything. We do social media seminars, we do consulting for small and medium-sized companies and everything. You know, from putting you on Facebook and every, not only Facebook, everywhere. We do email marketing. I've been in marketing 25 years. Give me my card. I'd love to have your card. My name is David, by the way. My uncle was the first manager of the Tower Theater. Oh. My other uncle was the owner of the ice cream Barlo is so the first Cuban jewelry store in Miami after Castro. So we're talking what year? 5960. Okay. Could you tell us a little bit about the history of the Tower? The Tower Theater basically became the only place where Cubans, mostly at that time, and Latinos could see a Spanish movie. That's amazing. It was the only thing, it was an old theater run down and somebody took it over, a Cuban took it over and basically they put, you know, films in Spanish. So it was really the only place that you could go to, to see. A, in those days that was unique. Because, that was unique. Yeah, to have All these people have been suppressed. Now they, they want to become capitalists. Because look at Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City is a great 
capitalist city, free enterprise. Look at what happened in Russia. Look at what happened in China. When when Raul went to China, he couldn't believe that people were having Mercedes Benz. They want the same thing he drives in Havana. Yeah, but he's the only one that drives. But he's the only, exactly, the, the only elite group drives that. So therefore, it, he couldn't believe it that the glory borough of the Communist Party would allow that. He saw because to be, they're very insecure in Cuba. Well, I mean, they're, they're afraid, they're fearful that people will gain economic power. The repression in Cuba is more economic than political. You know, I've lived in Miami 35 years. I moved a year ago to Little Havana so I can learn more Spanish. Uh, yo aprendo español, es muy importante uh, language in todo el mundo. And back in the 70s and 80s, Miami had a lot of money and everybody was doing good. But now, there's a lot of poverty and it's very sad because I love Miami and I, I hate to see people suffer so much. I would like to open a food bank in Little Havana. There is no food for the poor people in Little Havana. And I already have Publix that will donate food and I'm working towards getting other uh, participants to make it happen. Also, why is it that the local churches don't supply a hot meal every now and then? We need more compassion for the poor people of Miami. That's all I have to say. I have a question for you. Yes. What happened that this turnaround, this, this going downhill? I, I had a heart attack and a stroke. Yeah. I'm a, a, I'm a, I'm a US, former US Navy, and currently I'm a licensed sailboat captain. But I had the heart attack and stroke, and I sail across oceans. Mm -hmm. And uh, my crew doesn't have the training that I have. I do meteorology, I do the weather. I know all the mechanical systems of the boat to repair them all. I know, uh, I do training with paramedics. I do training with the Dade County Firefighting School. And if I were to have a heart attack or stroke at sea, my crew would be in danger because I'm the one with the knowledge. So it's not fair for me to go to sea until I recover. But what I'm also asking you is, like, you said that things were really great in Miami. They were. In the past. Yes. And, and now we're at a different time. Is it because of the general economic downturn or something else? It's, it's two things. It's the general economic downturn. And I will say that in the 60s and 70s, when the Cubans came to Miami, they built this town. They, they built this town. They made it happen. They were the best people. And uh, there was marijuana smuggling. Created a lot of money. It was, uh, didn't really hurt anybody. And uh, there was not very much violence. But then the US government decided they had an agenda. They wanted to go move towards the police state. They wanted to get more powers and take power away from the people. So what they did was they stopped the marijuana and the CIA introduced the cocaine and enforced it because they, they couldn't have a drug war. I, uh, you see, like, if I want to, first of all, the, the pension I have, I'm not allowed to work, because if I can work, yeah. they cut my pension off. Right, yeah. If my heart starts to hurt, or my head starts to hurt, I gotta go home and lay down. Right. So I'm able-bodied, but only for short periods of time. Well, I understand what you mean. So, like, say I wanted to come get a job at McDonald's, and all of a sudden I start having heart well, problems. you have a... Then I tell the boss, hey, listen, I gotta go home in the no, middle I know, of the shift. I know you can't maintain a job you, you that have, way. Uh, you have a disability, but it's invisible to... Exactly, to what exactly. About. Which is very difficult. Yeah, I know. It's like I'm not missing a leg It's or making, it like actually that. makes it a little bit more difficult at times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, uh, so, I, I asked some street people to teach me how to panhandle, yeah. and, and it's kind of like an experiment. Yeah. And uh, I find, like, a lot of poor people, they come, hey, you got a dollar? Yeah. So I decided, I'm a student of psychology, I decided to find a way to ask people for money in a kind, soft voice. Yeah. And even if they don't give me money, they, uh, I say, okay, have a great day anyhow. Yeah, you know? I, I know a lot of people do and that. And I'm very, I'm very nice about it. And sometimes people change their mind. Yeah. The other thing I do is 
people when they come up through the drive-thru, yeah. uh, they roll their window up quick. Yeah. That's why I hold two quarters and I go, yeah. And and about one out of four cars changes their mind and rolls their window down and gives me change. Well, because you're more specific. I never ask. I never ask for a dollar yeah. ever. I just ask for change. Yeah. And if they can't find change, they they give me. What uh, do they have? They they give me a dollar a lot of times. Oh. So I never ask for a dollar. I never ask a customer that's going into McDonald's. Yeah. Because that's McDonald's business. Right. When they come out. They, they leave the door, then I ask. In public domain, of course. Right. And when they come out, and when they come out of the drive-thru. Yeah. In other words, I don't want to, I don't want to mess up somebody's uh, eating experience. Yeah. And if I see a single parent with a with a child, I don't ask them. Yeah. Because I know that they're they are probably struggling. But you know what's interesting? I can I can ask a hundred people in BMWs and Mercedes. 50 cents, I get nothing. I ask a guy that's got a dented fender yeah. and is a, a worker, he'll give me 50 cents or Well, yes, I mean, I've read studies like that. Yeah. That most of the poor are the ones who are giving to the poor. Because they understand. Exactly. ¿Sabe lo que significa el mural ese? Um, bueno, son cosas culturales. Es un concepto de un proyecto. Ah. Se llama el Proyecto Multicultural de las Américas. Ah, claro. Porque a través del arte buscamos la historia de nuestros pueblos, reviviendo valores y leyes culturales. En esto se busca una real integración americana con un continente nativo en América. Así que un placer de verdad encontrarlo en esta calle como un 